was the beginning of the two-day meeting by the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria. The meeting initially scheduled for Monday, Tuesday this week was uh, rescheduled for Thursday and Friday. So by this time tomorrow, we'll be looking at the final day of those two-day meetings. It's the first time of interest rate decision-making by the Monetary Policy Committee <coughs> of Nigeria's Central Bank. Adim Okwesa is from Financial Derivatives Company and is here to take us through commodities markets now. Good morning. Good morning, Wilson. It's good to have you, Thank you. Uh, here on the program. So let's uh, get the burning issues out of there. Uh, it's been a very interesting week, like we stated on Tuesday, with the UK Africa event and, and what have you, and the Davos 2020, what have you. But again, we're coming back home to a number of issues that are peculiar to us. When we talk about inflation, we talk about uh, the monetary policy uh, committee meeting. What's your thinking at FDC about how these uh, uh, folks will decide tomorrow? Well, yeah, this MBC meeting is coming at a time of rising inflation. Inflation has risen consecutively since August 2019. And more importantly, inflation expectations are negative. That is what the CBN will be looking at. Inflation expectations. Inflation is likely to rise in chopping common months because of the VAT increase, the border closure, and so many other various factors. Do we have factors. any idea how bad it will get? 12%, we're already at almost at the doorstep of 12%. Exactly, yes. So it's going 13, the, it's going 14. The IMF predicts that in, it will be 13% in January. 13%. Yes, that would be a sharp increase, 102 basis points. So that would be very significant. So, in January? Yes, yes. So because of that, because one thing that is clear is that because of it, due to historical trends, Domestic monetary conditions are determined largely by the need to preserve the exchange rates. So because of all this, because of the need to preserve the exchange rate and because of the need to anchor inflation, the commencement of a tightening cycle is becoming more and more of a distinct possibility. Maybe not this meeting, but certainly March or May. Tightening cycle yes. or easing cycle? I think tightening. I think the direction. The CBN also made, already made it clear in 2019 that 2020 will be restrictive monetary policy. So I believe easing has gone. I think tightening will be the main focus in 2020. Uh, so how much tighter do you think the MPC will go? We got uh, a 0.5% haircut in the middle of last year, I guess around March or so meeting. <clears throat> Are they going to take it back? Well, because... Take us back to 14%. That is more of a possibility. But because global monetary conditions, the U.S. interest rates are low, so there isn't that much pressure to raise your NPR much so as to attract FPIs. That isn't that, that pressure isn't there. So, and also the CBN has also been using targeted credit <clears throat> schemes to try and, <clears throat> try and boost the real sectors of the economy, like manufacturing and Greek sectors. For example, this LDR 65% ratio, the CBN has used that to try and stimulate activities in those sectors. So I believe even if the CBN inches up its NPR, it will continue to use these targeted credit schemes. Mm. What else is on the burning economic list from your firm? Yes, I think the main talk of the town is, is the prospect of Nigeria being added to, to, the, to the US travel ban list. Every, most everywhere, where, almost everywhere I went to yesterday, everybody was talking about that. <coughs> so it is a major development. From what I understand, the Department of Homeland Security has recommended that Nigeria and six other countries be added to this travel ban list. Mm. I think the White House will determine if, if adding these countries would make the homeland safer. If it does that, I think it might end up in the courts, like the original ban ended <coughs> up doing. Because I remember it was highly controversial. People called it a Muslim ban. So, but I think there'll also be an opportunity for countries on this list to perhaps review their immigration policies, review their travel, 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 um, travel precautions, counter-terrorism precautions, so that, and also, Chad was on the, on the original list, but once they demonstrated measures that they had undertaken to improve their immigration policies, improve their travel travel policies, improve their counter-terrorism counter precautions, they were taken off the list. So all hope is not lost. But if, in the short term, if Nigeria has added to this list to have a far-reaching impact on the economy, because... Yeah, it, it will have a lot of uh, uh, impact on trade and all of that. Yes. <clears throat> so, uh, because the United States is one of the um, uh, destinations for Nigerians who want to travel for, for business meetings, for, for trade, for for merchandising yes. and, and the all student of that. population, yes, the student population, student population is, is very large. Yes. High. So it's going to be something we need to watch. But I don't want us to miss out on the FDI report from UNCTAD, that's the United Nations uh, <clears throat> Conference on Trade 
and development? Yes, um, yeah, from the reports, uh, FDI rose short up by 71% to $3.4 billion in 2019. If you take that in isolation, it seems good. Yes, uh, uh, FDI rose by 71%. That was a sharp That's increase. That's in percentage terms. Yes. In <coughs> absolute figure terms. Yes. 3.4 billion is very minuscule. It's a drop in an ocean. If you divide that over a 12 yes. month calendar period, it comes to a very paltry. Yes. And you can see the second or the third point on our downers list Nigeria's mm. share of world. Investment flows is only 0.221%. That is very small for a country of our size and potential. Mm. But the good news is that we have done, we have carried out measures to try and improve our business environment. Through the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council, we have improved significantly in terms of our ease, ease, and ease of doing business environment. So there is, there is hope on that front. But as of now, 3.4 billion is just, like you said, it's just a drop of water. We need to, we need to be attracting more, much more inflows than that. Mm. We, we, we made some we made some show at the UK investment summit about 6.5 billion dollars. Let's see if that is a, a, a beginning of a new of a curve for us in, higher in terms of business deals inflows that will come into the country. But again, we have quite a lot of work to do. Uh, but, but let's go to the product, uh, the commodity of the day, and that's beef. Yes, beef indeed. comes from cattle. Cattle is an issue when it comes to cows and all of that. So, uh, well, where are we in terms of beef? Commodity beef production, in whatever form folks want to eat it, uh, whether it's uh, Asun or Suya, whatever it is. It, this is big business in Nigeria. From what I see on social media, some Suya sports guys are making more money than some microfinance banks, maybe even more than some commercial banks. Yes. In terms of daily takings. Yes, yes. Beef is a very popular, popular product. Yeah, beef, in terms of, let's say, the group of meats in general, beef is actually the most popular of, of the meats in Africa. People prefer beef to, let's say, pork, chicken, lamb, and so on and so forth. But another thing I would like to point out is that the geography of beef consumption is changing. Whereas in the 90s, America used to, Americans used to consume a lot of beef. Now it is, it is chicken that is, that is king in America. Mm -hmm. China is now the major market for, for beef consumption. Africa, Africa as a continent, we consume... Very little beef, but that is due to perhaps low income. Beef is seen as a more expensive product, so because of the restriction on our, on our, on our pockets, people don't usually consume a lot of beef, but that is going to change. For example, the Food and Agricultural Organization predicts that beef consumption in Africa would rise significantly, and also the number of cattle, 40% of the world's cattle will be, will, be Africa, will be in Africa. But... On the other perspective, on the other front, beef consumption is bad for the environment. Beef cattle rearing is bad for the environment. That is due to the fact that cows produce methane. Mm -hmm. Methane is a very powerful greenhouse gas. Energy, yes. Yes, so that is very bad. And because of that trend, we're seeing a rise in plant-based meat products. I don't, I don't know if... Honestly, yeah, impossible yes, food. Yes, beyond impossible meat. beyond mm -hmm. meat, exactly. Mm -hmm. In the exactly. US, so yes. that, is, that trend, although it's a very small market, that trend is, is becoming more popular. But, but they've made an entry into our menu list and the entire conversation. We can't take them out. Yes. But again, if we talk about beef pricing in Nigeria, where are we at the moment? Where, where, beef is slightly it? under 2,000 naira per, per kilogram. So, and, and, and there hasn't been really much change in the pricing for the past six months, seven months. It's mm -hmm. been... Pretty stable, so that is very that will be pleasing news for the consumers. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, in terms of uh, of uh, let's check in with crude oil uh, uh, and with uh, everything that is going on in Libya, Iraq, uh, and the rest, uh, and this uh, coronavirus and, and all that. It looks like a crude oil is getting knocked a bit. Yes, crude oil over the last fell hours. sharply. Has fallen by about almost five percent in the last two days. That is because of the risk of demand. Like you said, the coronavirus is really making investors concerned Nervous. because mm. if you recall in 2000 when a similar coronavirus called the SARS which also originated from China it led to a 10 percent drop in air travel which also had a knock-on effect on demand for oil because of course aviation fuel is extracted from oil so with less people traveling there's less requirements for aviation fuel so people are, are concerned that that might happen again but it's still early to tell how far the disease has spread so it's still very premature to determine the impact of the disease but also that is complicated by the fact that china is a secretive nation it's known to withhold information so that might complicate the issue the world health organization has just delayed its 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 determination of if the disease will become a global if if disease will be called a global pandemic. We've seen about five or six countries so far. Yes, 
from yes. homeland China to, yes. to South Korea yes. to Japan. Japan. Even in the U.S. Uh, in the US. Case in so we're US, talking yeah. about five countries already, yes. and no one knows whatever, whatever this will pop up. And so everyone is trying to be careful and take precautionary motive. But again, if you start, uh, you start quarantining airports and all of, like you said, the flight scares getting in on people. If the flight is not really necessary, why do you need to, to make a flight? So yes. airline shares, as, as we understand this morning, is getting a very hit. In fact, the Asian market, the Chinese market, is taking a very big hit on the coronavirus uh, this morning, and it's not looking good on, on the... Uh, uh, on, on it, some of the stories coming through that even uh, train services in China around that province trains are empty folks are not going in yes. folks are not going out and, and when China which is the world's second largest economy uh, begins to face a health scare that would definitely have implications for econo for its economy yes. then we also need to uh, keep one permanent eye on that development. Yes, I think the World Health Organization is set to determine if it's a global pandemic. If it does that, then the response from the international community will definitely be stronger, and I think that will be able to contain the disease much faster and better. So, I don't think we need to wait for the World Health yes, Organization. Exactly, exactly, uh, so, yeah. Because by the time that announcement is made, uh, perhaps lots more lives would have would have lost. And because here at home, we're facing a few issues already. Mm. Look at the Lassa fever yes. that is becoming, it's becoming an issue. A number of folks, are, or two dozens of folks are, are dead in some areas already. So we, and which all come from rats, uh, which infect food. So mm. everyone is advised now to keep their, their rice, their beans, and other things uh, well covered so as to prevent. Uh, and when things like folks may just get scared of buying those things mm. and, and try to consume something else because nobody is sure, no one is sure what happens to, to this health issue. So it's an issue. Uh, but again, on a global uh, scale, look at sugar, wheat, cocoa, uh, and that basket for us, as always. Well, cocoa prices are, are inching up slightly because of the demand and also because of production constraints in Ivory Coast, the world's largest, largest cocoa, cocoa producer. producer. Yes, so that is driving up sugar prices too. And also, sugar is also on the, on the upturn because of, largely because of supply constraints in Asia. So that is good for, for Nigeria. Cocoa prices are, are, are increasing. So on that note, we'll get more export earnings from, from that commodity. Mm. Um, but, but again, beyond cocoa, what else is there that you think we should take note of? Wheat is always wheat, a major concern for me. Wheat, corn, corn, those, those prices are also increasing because of expectations of, of, of higher demand, especially for U.S. Yes, green. As you know, the one of the major components of the phase one trade deal was that China would purchase about two hundred billion dollars worth yeah, so of. So we all thought everything is fine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we thought that once the deal was signed, everything is fine. Yes, but because of the expectations for for higher demand for U.S. grains, those corn and wheat are inching up this week. Yeah, so that is what is driving those prices higher. Mm. But what of sugar, which is a, a major one one key product? But again. What do we do with our sugar, one way or the other? Uh, if you eat bread, meat pies, whatever, you get some yes, sugar in it. Yes, sugar. We're seeing some supply issues in major producing countries like Malaysia, Thailand, and also Brazil. So that is what is providing support to, to the sugar market. But overall, because of this shifting dietary trend to more healthier healthier products, even okay, the, healthier, healthier diet. Yes, even the yes. major sugar producing companies like perhaps Coca-Cola, Nestle, they are trying to reduce their sugar contents in their, in their products. So in the longer term, the demand for sugar is, will likely fall drastically and that would affect the price of sugar. For Nigeria being a major importer of sugar, that is good for us. Uh, let's wrap this up. Uh, in, in terms of your take on where oil prices are, try, try to get back to our primary product yes. for our earnings here, which is crude oil. What's your uh, short to medium term outlook on crude oil? Some folks say uh, uh, we might lose about $3 per barrel or on a barrel of Brent. Uh, that's what the folks at Goldman Sachs says yesterday uh, on this coronavirus, whatever it is. Yes, this coronavirus will definitely have a major impact on, on prices. And it's also happening at a time when supplies from non opec countries are also rising too. So those two factors, the, fact, the demand risk and the prospect of increasing supply from non opec countries, so demand for, so the outlook for, for crude oil is not looking good at all. We'll probably trade closer to $60 per barrel in the near to medium term. So that is the outlook for prices. But of course, what would OPEC do? Would OPEC deepen its production cuts to kind of tighten global supply again? I think the next OPEC meeting will be in March this time. So 
hopefully in March, if oil prices are still trading closer to $60, the OPEC will be able to deepen its production quota. Mm. Very interesting where uh, crude oil prices are at the moment. Uh, U.S. Uh, WTI is 1.48% negative as we speak. 55.90. Brent crude continues trading future 62.45, down 1.22%. Not a very uh, 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 nice day yet <laughs> for this Thursday mm -hmm. for crude. Ajim Okwesa, thank you so much. Thank you very from much. From Financial Derivatives okay. Company. Uh, <coughs> so we have natural gas continuous contract up 1.89%, but U.S. crude and Brent are in negative territory, more than 1% on the counter. Heating oil is also down 1.3%. Uh, RBOB gas, gasoline continuous contract, 0.66% in negative territory this uh, Thursday.